Hi guys, it's Levi from the Future Maker Lab, and we just got a new toy. So we've all seen these robot dogs, and they're pretty cool, but what do people actually use them for? One of the first uses for robot dogs was actually to carry cargo for soldiers. They were basically using them as pack mules. A primary use for these robot dogs is actually doing inspections. So let's say you worked at a factory or a refinery or another dangerous area, and you wanted to inspect something, but you didn't want to shut down all the machinery to go do it. That's when you could actually send in one of these robot dogs. They could go do the inspection for you, look at it with cameras, different sensors, but you wouldn't have to shut down any of the machines. Elon Musk actually did this at the SpaceX launch site. He has two Boston Dynamics robot dogs that they go and do inspections right after the launch. Another thing these robot dogs are used for is police departments and security companies can actually use them to patrol areas. If you look at this black thing right here, this is a LiDAR sensor. Basically, this is scanning its environment. It's gonna make a map of it and it can autonomously walk around on its own. You can set it up to do patrols, predetermined routes, all that stuff. So basically, it's a walking security camera that's capable of reporting things that it sees. One of the really cool uses for these robot dogs is actually to patrol the Chernobyl power plant and other sites like it. So Chernobyl, if you haven't heard, is a massive power plant from the former Soviet Union, had a massive meltdown. Uh, it's uninhabitable for thousands of years because of the very high levels of radiation. They can send these robot dogs in there to patrol with Geiger counters on them, and they check out where the hot spots of radiation are popping up. Especially with the recent war in Ukraine, a lot of that radiation has been kicked back up. They're able to send these in there to go check it out. One of my favorite uses for these robot dogs hasn't been done yet, but there's talks about it. They want to send these to Mars. Now there's a couple reasons. First, we want to colonize Mars. Uh, it's actually been in the works for a little bit. First, we're going to go to the moon. We're going to try to live there. And if we can do that, we're going to try the same thing on Mars. These are able to autonomously do tasks out in the elements because they can withstand a lot more than people can. They can also explore on their own. Um, right now, we have a couple rovers on Mars, but there's a massive delay. Um, so when we do like a control from here, we tell it to turn right, turn left, go forward. It takes a long time. So it's a very slow process and we can't make split second decisions. One of these could think for itself and it could walk around and report what it sees. Like I said, it's not been done yet, but they're talking about it. One of the really cool uses for this was during the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, in hospitals, they were actually sending them into the rooms so they didn't have to come in contact with the patients. So you could, you know, put a basket on the back of this thing, load up stuff that they needed, or they could go just check and converse with the patient without having to be in harm's way. What do you think we should use our robot dog for? We're planning on taking it into classrooms and community events and showing it off to the public. If you want to see one of these in your classroom, visit us at www.futuremakerlab.com, book us, and we'd love to work with you. My name is Levi from the Future Maker Lab. See you next time.